Hi, I'm Paul Bunak. Welcome to the JKD Street Fighting Series. This particular tape is Headbutts, Knees, and Elbows. Hi, I'm Paul Bunak. Welcome to the JKD Street Fighting Series. This particular tape is on headbutts, knees, and elbows. Why do we allocate a whole tape on three tools? Why not locks, flips, and throws? Well, this is the JKD Street Fighting Series, and for street fights, headbutts, knees, and elbows seem to work quite well. When you're in a range that you can throw your elbow or your head or your knee at a guy's growing, this is a range that is totally unfamiliar to street fighters. It is totally unfamiliar to boxers. It's totally unfamiliar to kickboxers or karate people. This is something that Bruce Lee found out. He wanted to get into this particular range called trapping range, and he would trap the hands up using his pre-existing art of Wing Chun. Once the hands are trapped in this position, when you bury an elbow or a headbutt or a knee, you're gonna take a guy out of commission. So what Bruce did, was he incorporated a little bit of Thai boxing, a little bit of Wing Chun's economy of motion, a little bit of Kali's rhythm, and the way he would throw the headbutts, the knees, and the elbows is totally unfamiliar with anyone else. So what I'd like you to do is, first of all, see where we use these tools, how we use them, and how we get into them. You need to know that to get into trapping range, you had to have had countless thousands of hours kickboxing to where you're into what we call clinch range. The minute we're into clinch range, we throw the boxing and the kicking out, and we implement the Wing Chun right to this point. And now the head butts, the knees, and the elbows come in. In Bruce's art of Wing Chun, he noticed that after the battle punch, and then the opponent would flare or cover, this wouldn't necessarily take out the big guy. So after this battle punch, he needed to throw in that elbow. He needed to throw in that headbutt or that knee. These are the tools that Bruce found to take a person out of commission. He can't simply continue with the battle punch against a six foot eight Samoan. So these tools Bruce honed and developed. And you need to know they're done out of a range called trapping range. Okay, stood let me by you. Now what you need to understand is when you're in a street fight and you do get into that clinched range, there is always one line open, sometimes two. So we have three lines of attack on the body. Each line represents one of our tools. A headbutt is the high line, the elbows are the middle line or the punches, and the knees are the low line. So the headbutts, knees, and elbows. The minute we clinch here, let's say we're clinched in this position in a fight, well, there's two lines closed here, the high and the middle. Well, the low lines are open. Let's say we're clinched right here. Now what two lines are closed? The middle and the low. Boom, the high's open. If all three lines are closed, I don't know what they're doing, but they're not fighting. So the point is, and immediately when you're in a street fight, immediately when you get into trapping range, what you're really learning is to find the line that's open and to hit it. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you through some different trapping sequences that get you right into the headbutt. Once again, reiterating that the way we headbutt knee and elbow is to first trap the hands up. The Wing Chun precedes our headbutts, knees, and elbows, as opposed to Thai boxers, which they do it out here. So when they come in, they get clinched, and you don't get that boom, you don't get that clean shot because the guy's not standing here. So when you combine the occupying center line theory of Wing Chun, trapping the hands up, and then throwing Wing Chun out and putting in this, Oh, you've got a different animal altogether. So let's play with that concept. Now, before we go into our actual traps that precede our headbutts, our knees, and our elbows, I want to go through the mechanics with you. The mechanics of a headbutt, or an elbow, or a knee, are very similar to the mechanics of a boxing punch. If you take a guy that just steps in the gym for the first time, he's going to throw a jab and a cross and a hook. And after about five years of doing it well, you're going to see the whole body going behind everything. And that makes all the difference in the world. If you see a guy headbutt like that, that to me is like a guy throwing a punch like that. 
I have never seen anybody headbutt the right way. There is a way, there's a mechanic that you headbutt. If you don't do it that way, all you're going to do is piss this guy off. And where do you headbutt him? Well, first of all, people say this is the thickest part of the skull. I don't care. It hurts more. Okay? Up here is where you headbutt somebody. The top of your head to their face. A headbutt is not like two elephant seals bucking heads together. A headbutt, you're slamming the top of your head into your opponent's face. And most of the time, you're also pulling his face into your head. So it's like two cars colliding. With an elbow, you never elbow with the whole forearm. I'm not saying that's not going to hurt, but it's not going to do the kind of damage we want to do. When we hit with our elbow, it's just that last maybe inch in diameter, maybe the size of a quarter. And that's all you're doing is you're burying that part of the elbow. So if you've got a guy's head this close and you go to elbow him, you can end up hitting here unless you have the right mechanics, unless the body can talk. Same thing with the knee. You don't want to be throwing a knee at a guy and hitting in here. When you throw a knee at somebody, you want just that to hit. So there's a prerequisite in order to take a guy out of commission with a headbutt, the knee, and the elbow. And that's body mechanics. Body mechanics is something that is very difficult to teach. So what I'd like you to do is watch what I'm doing. Watch how I'm exaggerating slightly the body mechanics. We're going to take a little bit of Wing Chun, and we're going to flow from Wing Chun right into the headbutts. It's important for you to understand that this is just a very basic raw, beginning, rudimentary way to train. But in order to do this right, you have to progress until you've got a guy in front of you who's really trying to hit you. He's a good boxer. He's got that helmet on. You're moving around, and you have to enter. Pass those punches. Most of the time, you'll probably proceed it with a blast. Trap up the hands, boom, and then do it. Unless you can do that, all of this is absolutely irrelevant.